Welcome back everyone. We are on our quest to autonomous driving and autonomous cars. And that's a very long road. In this step, we just go in through reinforcement learning. I finally managed to get it to work. What you see in front of you is the car using the front facing camera, essentially using just the computer vision to follow the road and to follow lane markings. As you can see, it will drive through red lights just now, so it doesn't see traffic lights yet. But this is just the first step to get this going. Let's get into how to do this. Previously, we've connected um, reinforcement learning or RL framework represented by and in the blue corner, stable baseline 3. Let's call it RL from now on. And in the re red corner, there is Carla, which is our driving simulator. Now, we connected them before, but the models uh, were not being trained, or the car didn't see what to do next or how to improve. It kept crashing. And I'm sure many, many of you have tried after my tutorial on how to get them working together. So, the changes we had to make, were there were basically a few of them. Let's just recap what is going on behind the scenes, or what's the overall architecture. So, we've got the simulator running here, and that simulator is sending images from the front-facing camera, and I'm using semantic segmentation, which is a separate story. I mentioned this before, but I'm trying to stick to it because it's already categorized objects in the screen or in the camera by color. Anyway, this object is going into RL during training. And then what we want to do as a result of car crashing or not crashing, it will try to figure out how to give us the right outputs to achieve maximum reward, which is not crashing and getting somewhere. So what we're asking it to do is to learn how to steer and to learn how to control throttle. So we actually trying to asking it to learn two things, which is kind of too much for a start, right? So I'm trying to really make it simple so we can see how it can actually how you can force reinforcement learning to do simple things so the image if we look into it behind the image i've got this 3d visual representation of what the image looks like as an array so it's got quite a lot of pixels as you can imagine uh, which is quite complex it's, it's got different colors and also the top part of the image is not really useful for the car, right? What goes on in the sky, the buildings, doesn't really matter. And I know there are some traffic lights and some other jazz, but we let's just say we're not interested for now. All we're trying to do to get us started is for the car to see the road and see the lane markings and turns and all that. That's what we're trying to do and that's what I finally got working. Okay, let's see how couple of things. I'm getting rid of throttle prediction. I'm getting the car driven at a constant speed using some basic color programmatic configuration. So increase throttle if, if it's below a certain speed or reduce throttle if it's above it. That sort of simple logic. So it's not really controlled by any neural nets or any reinforcement learning. Uh, it's just uh, within the simulator programmatically. I hope it makes sense. I'm only asking RL to give me steering output or to learn how to control steering to avoid crashing and actually get somewhere within the simulation. So that's step one. I'm getting rid of throttle control. Step two. I, as I said, I want to do something with the image. And what I do with the image is a couple of things. One, I get rid of the top part, and that means I crop it. 
and from the original image that may look like this we we get the image that looks like that which mostly contains exactly what the car needs for steering that's step one step number two i'm also trying to convert it to a simpler object because when i asked chat gpt hey what about stable baselines 3 does it have like a convolutional neural network engine built in and I'm not really sure if I should rely because uh, on the answers from ChatGPT. However, um, I decided to apply convolutional, basic convolutional conversions outside before the image is going into RL. And what you see here is exact sort of exact array of the original image. This very image that you see in front of you when it's converted before going into RL this is what it looks like it doesn't have like 300 dimensions and pixels it only has 7 by 18 by 8 dimensions and when it's this image is converted this very image that's what it looks like when it's being converted so how did I convert it now I didn't want to talk too much about it but I basically trained a separate neural net to convert the original image and represent it as a um, um, as an array and the way I did it is I used pre-generated images from my previous tutorial and I built a separate neural net model to predict steering output from just using the crop image this time because i want that very image to go for our training so it, i needed to be consistent but i also excluded this predictive layer like i didn't want the actual angle predicted by some model i just wanted the previous step of the most raw information or the um, array that goes into that prediction and effectively i stole the output of the second last layer you call it you may call it a, it wasn't actually a second one but um because the model also was trying to predict the end like GP, there was a gps input and that had to go through a separate uh, model path but essentially before it got merged together with that path within the model i just used that convolutional layer to give me the um the, my array so essentially what I was trying to do is I was trying to perform some convolutional transformation to my original image however uh, to make it most useful for steering angle prediction but I wanted that in raw format and that's essentially what I did by training the model and then saving the model um, this way using these commands here that you can find on this slide to essentially avoid predicting the final angle but giving me this output in this array okay and also when in my environment the custom environment for stable baselines 3 i also had this function I load the model that is saved and it's actually within the GitHub repository so you don't need to pre-train the model so you, you can just use that file that is already there and that's how it's being used. Um, don't ask me for all of these commands because this, this was total pain. Whenever you train a pre, uh, neural network um, you then try to go through just making sure you can make predictions with it and to make predictions you have to go through some pain of actually uh, presenting the input information exactly the right way for prediction function to run okay this is all the wrapping around it essentially it's just this command here in bold which applies the model that i load from this file okay so the, there was quite a lengthy explanation what goes on in the image but in a nutshell i just pre-processed the image the image for rl framework to be able to see and uh, learn and optimize for crashing less and getting far so that's basically it you can find the code in my repository and there is a 
RL folder within it. So the, the actual Python modules you need um, uh, here. So the first one is the actual custom environment and I've got the description here what it does. The most important thing, of course, is that you can play with the reward um, logic. So the punishment the car gets if it crashes or the punishment that the car gets if it um, uh, detects lane intrusion, for example, if the car suddenly leaves from the lane. So that is being punished as well. And then you punish it for going in circles. Um, you you do a few other things. One of the things that I discovered is uh, when the streets are straight, so one of the easiest ways for, for the car to learn to avoid crashing was to drive straight as much as possible. So you can see this car driving along the straight street and then whenever the road turns, boom, it crashes. And essentially, if you start it straight, it will learn how to drive straight. So what I had to do is again, I've done it in my image generation is in one of my previous tutorials, how to train the, the car to, to see the lane markings and to turn. You spawn the car or you initiate the car and then you give it a little bit of a spin like, and you can see in the code, it's um, within eight degrees. So nothing crazy, just, you know, uh, set up the car straight, but then give it a random, random angle of your, either up to eight degrees left or right. And that forces the car to start seeing lane markings. And that's also a very important part of, you know, making RL do what you want it to do. And I hope you'll see it in the code and it will make sense. Now, this, the second module is the actual thing that you run. It uses that configured environment module. And that's where you define how many episodes you need to train or number of iterations. Um, important thing here is you need to let at least one iteration finish so the, for the model trained at that point to be saved. The models are saved at the end of each iteration. And I think I've, in the code, I've got five of them, you'll see. So if you can play with how many, many iterations you have, you're welcome to try at least a couple. And then the bottom part here is uh, the very same thing, but to run it for a test. So when the model gets trained, um, you'll find it similarly to what I have examples here, you'll find it in your C drive or wherever you install it somewhere, there will be a zip file. Um, and, uh, you know, hit me in the comments if you struggle to find it, but that's the model name that you need to put in the into this model for load. So it uses that model that is just learned to w use within the environment. So you can see how the, the car drives. And you can also try initiating Kala simulator. Obviously I've got, I've got it here that Kala needs to run and I'm using version 13 Kala. Uh, I haven't tried even downloading the latest version 15. I'm looking forward to it and there are some new towns there, but yes, that's probably all you need to know. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try yourselves as, um, as you hear from Tesla, they still converting FSD to neural net driven, which means uh, between ourselves that, you know, a lot of the functionality of the car to drive is uh, coded in if then else statements rather than neural nets, which is of course expected, but probably not to the extent that you really <laughs> expect in modern days. But anyways, there is plenty of opportunity for all of you to get train yourself in this stuff and maybe beat Tesla one day. I hope um, and I do encourage all, all of you to do that, to, to try your own things and see where you take it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you succeed in this and uh, I look forward to see you in the next tutorials. Bye.